Howdy folks! Welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Monday the 13th of February. We're already halfway through February. How'd that happen? My name is Rachel Parker. My pronouns are she and her. I am an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Edmonton in Alberta, Canada. I am responsible for the congregations of Dayspring Ministry, which are St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Saviour's Vermilion, and St. Thomas Wainwright. And we are members of the Anglican Church of Canada. So glad, glad to have you here with me today. Uh, I want to do I want to talk about a couple of things. There's sort of um, two things that I might be able to connect together, but there are two things I've been thinking a lot about lately. Um, one of them comes from a friend and a colleague here in the diocese, um, Archdeacon for rural or for Indigenous Ministries, um, Travis Enright. The other one comes from something that I heard Bo of the Fifth Column say about thoughts and prayers. So I'm going to tackle the first one about Travis, something he's teaching me. Um, and it's the whole difference between, I've got it written down here, taking a compliment and receiving a compliment. Last week, I was at a clergy conference and we were learning about anti-racism, which is going to come up in some of these videos one of these days. I'm still processing it. it was a lot of stuff that happened. Um, somebody gave me a compliment. And my first instinct when they gave me a compliment was to try to give it back. And I don't mean say, oh, no, you know, like whatever they said, like, uh, I read something or I said something and they appreciate, I'd said something and they appreciated me saying it publicly. And my first instinct was to say, well, no, that wasn't my original idea. I was saying it for somebody else. And they said, no, but it took courage for you to say it out loud. So thank you. And I realized something that Travis, as he was walking by and his, his presence in my sight line reminded me and, and Travis is indigenous and he has a different way of being. It's teaching me a great, a great deal. And, and he taught me a while ago that when someone gives you a compliment, it is not only not necessary to try to return it or to deny it, but it's actually quite rude. So when someone says to you, you know, I really like your hair, or you have a beautiful reading voice, or thank you so much for what you did for me, the appropriate thing is to say, thank you. They've given you a compliment, you say thank you, or you say you're welcome if it's a thank you. When we say, if I say to you, um, you know, I really, I really like the way you speak. You, you speak gently and articulately and with authority. And I really feel that I learn from you. If you say to me, well, thank you, but you know, I really am not that good and everything. It, it actually, it does a couple of things. I think it tells me that you didn't really believe me, but it also tells me that you're not really giving, you're not really honoring the gift that I have given you. You're taking the compliment and sort of shoving it back at me. What's the difference between someone saying, you know, I really appreciate the way you said that. You made me think. And so that's the, that's the compliment. And the response A is, well, you know, I just came to me and I don't know where it came from. I probably heard it from somebody else and I'm not really that smart. Or B, thank you. Thank you for telling me that you appreciated that. Which one, which one resonates most with you, really? Which one would you rather hear when you give a compliment? I think I used to say A because I'm so horrible at receiving compliments. I don't get a lot. I mean, I'm not angling for any. I'm just saying we are not a society that really actually is kind to each other much anymore. We do a whole lot of assuming. Um, so we don't compliment much. So maybe we should start doing that more often. Um, but the point being that I'm not really comfortable with receiving compliments. So my tendency would go with, with response A that, you know, sort of like, well, you know, you're stick handling the compliment and it's like, well, I don't know what to do with it. The mature response of thank you and receiving it as a gift is the most, is really is the most appropriate way. The person who gives us a compliment is sharing that with us from their own perspective. They are speaking a truth, assuming it's a, it's a genuine compliment. They are speaking a truth of theirs that they are wanting and feeling compelled for whatever reason to share with you. They are giving a gift of a part of themselves to you. The best thing we can do is to receive it, not try to shove it back, not try to stick handle it but simply to receive it. So that's a learning I've had and I'm really working on it. So I'm trying really hard to simply say thank you. 
not try to give it back. Not you're a good speaker too. That's another thing we do. Someone says to you, says something about you to you, and you come back with, "Oh, well, you're good at that too." That's not the point. If it was a true compliment, they weren't seeking one in return. We need to learn how to receive, how to receive a compliment and then sit with it and just be comfortable in that space with this beautiful gift we've been given. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the phrase thoughts and prayers. I heard Bo say that he was talking about response to something recently, about a week or so to a week or so ago. And he said, you know, there's always we can we thoughts and prayers. My thoughts and prayers are with you. I say it all the time. And I realized how trite that sounds. My thoughts and prayers are with you. It's like comments on on YouTube. When you type something, when you send me a comment and I come back with a God bless, I am uber aware of how trite that might sound. But I need you to understand and know that when I type God bless, I really do mean it. When I type in that, I am praying for you. So I'll just use Contravax as one of, as an example. If Contravax writes something to me and I write back, thank you, God bless. I mean it. I appreciate what he has had to offer. And as I'm typing that, I'm saying a prayer for him. God bless. God bless Contrafax or whoever it is that I'm writing to. Um, and, and, but the whole thoughts and prayers thing. Thoughts and prayers are important. They are, they are so important. There is something really powerful about knowing that someone was thinking about you. And it's like, it's like getting a cart. I know we don't do this very, very often now that we're in email society, but there's something really powerful about going to the mailbox and seeing a card with your name on it, that someone took the time to write a note, just a simple note and put it in an envelope, put your address on it, put on a stamp and popped it in the mail that, you know, days and sometimes weeks later, if you're living in Wayne, right, it takes forever to get here. Um, you realize that person you sent it to realizes that in that moment you were thinking about them. Those thoughts are powerful. That knowing that you exist in someone else's world, even when you're not with them, is incredibly powerful. And the idea of offering prayers, as, an Anglic- as, a, as a Christian who happens to be an Anglican and happens to be a priest, I absolutely believe in the power of prayer. I believe that prayer can change things. I believe that God works, that God does change things and that our prayers when we offer them, change things. I also believe that prayer changes us. That if I say a prayer for someone, especially maybe somebody I don't like very much or I struggle with, that prayer softens my heart. Sometimes saying a prayer for someone is the impetus I need to get off my butt and do something about something. If I'm praying about those people who are hungry and homeless and that prayer reminds me to go to the grocery store and fill up a cart and take it to the food bank, the prayer has become action. So prayer can be very powerful. But all too often we say things like thoughts and prayers. My thoughts and prayers are with you. And we never give it another thought. And it be, can become so trite. It can be so come so frustrating that we just thoughts and prayers. Yes, thoughts and prayers are required to have action, to have real meaning. But that action might simply be hitting your knees in prayer. It might simply be really sin- significantly and sincerely thinking about another person and then doing something about it. Maybe give them a call, send them an email, write them a card. Maybe it might be you can't do anything for that person, but you can do something for someone else. My thoughts and prayers have been the last several days with the people of Turkey and northern Syria as they have been dealing with that horrible, horrible earthquake and the death toll keeps rising. There is nothing I can physically do to help the people of Syria and Turkey, but I can pay attention I can make a donation through the Primates World Relief and Development Fund, which is a, a body that the Anglican Church of Canada uses to, to send money to places that need help. I can make a donation for them. I can invite people in my congregations to pray for them. I can read and learn more about those places and the people um, and, and allow the pain of that impact of what's happening to have an impact on my life and change who I am for the better, to allow compassion to grow within me. But simply saying thoughts and prayers, unless we sincerely mean them, we can run the risk of making someone feel that we just don't care. So just some things to think about. How do you receive a compliment? How do we respond when we say, what do you mean when we say thoughts and prayers? Think about the words you use, folks. 
Think about them carefully. Choose them carefully. And use them mindfully. Have a great day. And I do mean that. And God bless you. And I do mean that too. I'll see you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.